Hello class, welcome to Connect Ed. Children, today we will start with the chapter titled The Selfish Giant by Oscar Wilde. It is a story that deals with human love for animals and nature. The story shows how love and care can melt the hardest of hearts and cultivate emotions when there seems to be none. We have always heard our elders telling us to show love and care towards each other. We are told to be polite, not to be selfish. All this is taught so that we can adapt to good manners. So today, we will listen and understand a similar story where we will learn how being selfish can affect us. Students, by the end of this chapter, you will be able to understand that everyone specializes in something. This story will enable you to learn new words and phrases. It will help you learn better and effective ways of communication. You will also attain a better hold of your English language. Now, students read out the chapter loudly with me. If you get stuck anywhere, I'm here to assist you. So let's start reading this together. We will begin with the first part. Every afternoon, as they were coming from school, the children used to go and play in the giant's garden. It was a large, lovely garden with soft green grass. Here and there over the grass stood beautiful flowers like stars, and there were 12 peach tree that in the springtime broke out into delicate blossoms of pink and pearl, and in the autumn bore rich fruit. The birds sat on the trees and sang so sweetly that the children used to stop their games in order to listen to them. How happy we are, they cried to each other. One day the giant came back. He had been to visit his friend, the Cornish ogre, and had stayed with him for seven years. When he arrived, he saw the children playing in the garden. What are you doing here? He cried in a very gruff voice, and the children ran away. My own garden is my own garden, said the giant. Anyone can understand that, and I will allow nobody to play in it but myself. So he built a high wall all around it and put a notice board. Trespassers will be prosecuted. He was a very selfish giant. Very well, the giant's garden was very beautiful. It had beautiful blooming flowers. The trees had fruits. Birds used to sing sweetly. Children loved to play in it. Every afternoon as they were coming from school, they used to enter the large lovely garden with flowers and peach trees. But the giant was selfish. One day when he returned home after seven years of staying with his friends, he saw the children playing in the garden. He shouted at them angrily and they ran away. The giant decided not to allow anybody else to play there. So he built a high boundary wall around it. He also put up a notice that outsiders entering the garden will be punished. Now we move on to the second part, part two. The poor children had now nowhere to play. They tried to play on the road, but the road was very dusty and full of hard stones, and they did not like it. They used to wander around the high walls when their lessons were over and talk about the beautiful garden inside. How happy we were there, they said to each other. Then the spring came, and all over the country there were little blossoms and little birds. Only in the garden of the selfish giant, it was still winter. The birds did not care to sing in it as there were no children, and the trees forgot to blossom. Once a beautiful flower put its head out from the grass, but when it saw the notice board, it was so sorry for the children that it slipped back into the ground again and went off to sleep. The only people who were pleased were the snow and the frost. Spring has forgotten this garden, they cried, so we will live here all the year round. The snow covered up the grass with a great white cloak and the frost painted all the trees silver. Then they invited the north wind to stay with them and he came. 
He was wrapped in furs and he roared all day about the garden and blew the chimney pots down. This is a delightful spot, he said. We must ask Hale on a visit. So the Hale came. Every day for three hours he rattled on the roof of the castle till he broke most of the slates and then he ran round and round the garden as fast as he could go. He was dressed in grey and his breath was like ice. I cannot understand why the spring is so late in coming, said the selfish giant as he sat at the window and looked out at his cold white garden. I hope there will be a change in the weather. But the spring never came, nor the summer. The autumn gave a golden fruit to every garden, but to the giant's garden, she gave none. He is too selfish, she said. So it was always winter there, and the north wind and the hail and the frost and the snow danced about through the trees. Good. The poor children had no other place to go. They didn't like to play on the dusty road full of stones. They imagined how beautiful it was to play in the garden. Then the spring came all over the country. Only in the garden of the selfish giant it was still winter. No flowers bloomed and no birds sang. Once a flower sprouted from the grass, but after seeing the bulletin board, he also fell asleep again. He was sad to see these winters all around him. The only visitors were the snow and the frost, which painted all the trees silver. The north wind roared there all day. It also asked the hailstones to come. The giant wondered why the spring passed by his garden. It was always cold there. The garden became a cold, dry and ugly place. The giant could not understand the situation as the rest of the places enjoyed enriching sunshine and plentiful fruits and blooming flowers. He became sad and morose. Now let's proceed to the next part. One morning the giant was lying awake in bed when he heard some lovely music. It sounded so sweet to his ears that he thought it must be a king's musician passing by. It was really only a little Lynette singing outside his window, but it was so long since he had heard a bird singing in his garden that it seemed to him to be the most beautiful music in the world. Then the hill stopped dancing over his head and the north wind ceased roaring and a delicious perfume came to him through the open casement. I believe the spring has come at last, said the giant, and he jumped out of bed and looked out. One morning he heard some lovely music of a Lynette songbird outside his window. He jumped out of bed and looked out. He saw a wonderful sight. The children had crept in through a hole in the wall. They were sitting on the branches of trees which gladly welcomed them with flowers. Only in one corner it was still winter. A small boy was wandering all around the tree and crying. He was too small to climb up he saw a most wonderful sight. Through a little hole in the wall, the children had crept in and they were sitting in the branches of trees. In every tree that he could see, there was a little child and the trees were so glad to have the children back again that they had covered themselves with blossoms and were waving their arms gently above the children's head. The birds were flying about and twittering with delight and the flowers were looking up through the green grass and laughing. It was a lovely scene. Only in one corner it was still winter. It was the furthest corner of the garden, and in it was standing a little boy. He was so small that he could not reach up to the branches of the tree, and he was wandering all round it, crying bitterly. The poor tree was still covered with frost and snow, and the north wind was blowing and roaring above it. Climb up, little boy, said the tree, and it bent its branches down as low as it could, but the boy was too tiny, and the giant's heart melted as he looked out. How selfish I have been, he said. Now I know why that spring would never come here. I will put the poor little boy on the top of the tree and then I will knock down the wall 
and my garden shall be the children's playground forever and ever. He was really very sorry for what he had done. Very well. One morning, the giant hears what sounds like lovely music outside his window and so sweet to his ears that he thought it might be the king's musician passing by. It is actually Lynette chirping its songs, yet the time the giant had spent without hearing bird songs has made it sound incomparably beautiful to him. He jumped out of bed and looked out. He saw a wonderful sight. Then the giant hears that the forces of winter have stopped their assault on his home, and he smells the aroma of flowers wafting in through the window. Spring seems to have arrived at last. He saw the children entering his garden through a small hole. The children were sitting on tree branches and the trees were blooming. He also saw the birds fly and heard them chirp. The flowers had also risen, but to his surprise, winter was still in one corner. He saw that a boy was standing there and he could not reach the branches of the trees. The tree lowered its branches, but still it could not climb. So he crept downstairs and opened the front door quite softly and went out into the garden. But when the children saw him, they were so frightened that they all ran away and the garden became winter again. Only the little boy did not run for his eyes were so full of tears that he did not see the giant coming. And the giant stole up behind him and took him gently in his hands and put him into the tree. And the tree broke at once into blossom and the birds came and sang on it. And the little boy stretched out his two arms and flung them round the giant's neck and kissed him. And the other children, when they saw that the giant was not wicked any longer, came running back, and with them came spring. It is your garden now, little children, said the giant, and he took a great axe and knocked down the wall. And when the people were going to the market at 12 o'clock, they found the giant playing with the children in the most beautiful garden they had ever seen. Good. So children, after the giant saw this beautiful sight, he hurried towards the garden. As he stood near the garden, the children were so frightened that they ran away. The garden became winter again after the children left. The giant found the little boy still standing near the tree. He stood behind him and picked him in his arm. He put him onto the tree. The tree blossomed again. The boy hugged and kissed him. Other children found the giant to be in a jolly mood, so they came back. Now the spring was back as the children came back. The giant broke down the wall. People passing by saw him playing with the kids. People were amazed at seeing the most beautiful garden ever. All day long they played and in the evening they came to the giant to bid him goodbye. But where is your little companion, he said. The boy I put into the tree. The giant loved him the best because he had kissed him. We don't know, answered the children. He has gone away. You must tell him to be sure and come tomorrow, said the giant. But the children said that they did not know where he lived and had never seen him before. And the giant felt very sad. Every afternoon when school was over, the children came and played with the giant. But the little boy whom the giant loved was never seen again. The giant was very kind to all the children Yet he longed for his little friend and often spoke of him. How I would like to see him, he used to say. Years went by and the giant grew very old and feeble. He could not play about anymore. So he sat in a huge armchair and watched the children at their games and admired his garden. I have many beautiful flowers, he said, but the children are the most beautiful flowers of all good. The children played all day. They bid the giant goodbye. Before they left, he inquired about the little boy that he helped climb the tree. The children told him that they had never seen him before and they did not know where he was. Every day, the children used to visit the garden and play for hours. 
The giant still longed to meet his little friend, but that boy was never seen again. Years passed, the giant grew older and also got weaker. He could not play with the children anymore. He used to sit in a large armchair and admired his garden. He enjoyed seeing the children play. He thought to himself that children were the most beautiful flowers in his garden. Now we will complete the chapter by reading the last chapter. One winter morning, he looked out of his window as he was dressing. He did not hate the winter now, for he knew that it was merely the spring asleep and the flowers were resting. Suddenly, he rubbed his eyes in wonder and looked and looked. It certainly was a marvelous sight. In the farthest corner of the garden was a tree quite covered with lovely white blossoms. Its branches were golden and silver fruit hung down from them and underneath. It stood the little boy he had loved. Downstairs ran the giant in great joy and out into the garden. He hastened across the grass and came near to the child. And when he came quite close to his face, grew red with anger. And he said, Who had dared to wound thee? For on the palms of the child's hands were the prints of two nails, and the prints of two nails were on the little feet. Who had dared to wound thee? cried the giant. Tell me that I may take my big sword and slay him. Nay, answered the child, but these are the wounds of love. Who art thou? said the giant, and a strange awe fell on him, and he knelt before the child. And the child smiled on the giant and said to him, You let me play once in your garden. Today you shall come with me to my garden, which is paradise. And when the children ran in that afternoon, they found the giant lying dead under the tree, all covered with white blossoms. Good. Once the giant was getting dressed on a winter morning, he did not have the same hate for winters anymore. He believed that the flowers were just resting and the spring was asleep. Suddenly, he looked outside astonishingly. He looked at the farthest tree that had white blossoms. The giant awakens to a miraculous sight. The tree in the farthest corner of the garden has transformed, bearing white blossoms and silver flute on its now golden branches. Beneath the tree is none other than the little boy who once tried to climb it, evidently no older than he had been then. Overjoyed, the giant rushes down to meet his friend, yet stops when he sees that the little boy's hand and feet bear wounds, evidently from the nails that had pierced him through. Enraged that someone would dare wound a child, let alone his first and dearest friend, the giant vows to strike the culprit down with his sword, but the child bids him peace. Nay, he says, but these are the wounds of love. At this moment, the giant realizes that he is in the presence of no ordinary child. Who art thou? he asks, reverently kneeling before the boy. The little boy does not answer the giant directly, but rather says, You let me play once in your garden, today you shall come with me to my garden, which is paradise. When the children visit the giant that afternoon, they find his body lying beneath the tree, covered in its white blossoms. Okay class, now that we have learned all these new words, let's use them in some sentences. I shall show you some sample sentences now. Later on, make your own sentences with these words and then show them to your teacher. Ogre. Hiding in the forest, the giant ogre tried to curb his appetite for human flesh. Gruff. His tone was not, not quite so gruff as it might have been. Trespassers. The trespasser comes on to the premises at his own risk. Prosecuted. DNA evidence was used to prosecute the killer and lock him up for good snow or frost or north wind or hail there is some frost on the panes casement on the broad stone ledge outside the casement he kept his bottle of spring water feeble he was a feeble helpless old man slay 
the intense cold radiating from the weapon will slay anyone it cuts. Children, now that the chapter is finished, let's look at some fun exercises now. You have five minutes to try these questions out. Why did the children go to the giant's garden? Where did giants go for seven years? Why didn't spring enter the giant's garden? Why were the snow and the frost happy? How did the giant react to the child? Excellent answers, students. Now let's match your answers with the answer sheet. The children used to go to the giant's garden because it was a large, lovely garden with soft grass with beautiful flowers and peach trees bearing fruits. The giant went to visit his friend, the Cornish ogre, and stayed there for seven years. The giant did not allow the children to play in his garden, so spring did not enter there. The snow and the frost were happy because the spring had forgotten the garden, so they stay all year round. The giant was infused with energy seeing the child again in his garden. He ran downstairs in great joy and hastened across the grass. Students, now try to answer these personal questions on your own. Remember students, there can be many correct answers. Service for the welfare of others should be the aim of human deeds. What do you feel in light of this statement? The little child's hand and feet had marks of nails. Who does the child remind you of? Give a reason for your answer. So that's it for today's class. Thank you and hope you all had fun learning.